Introducing my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, the phone that I have actually switched to, even though I thought it's the last phone I'd ever switch to. It has been almost three years to the day to when I started on my journey to see whether the grass is in fact greener on the other side. Mmm, it smells of barbecue. So yes, whilst this might be yet another switching video, it is one that I hope will be balanced from someone who has used both iPhone and Android for some years now. And I wanted to explain why I switched to Android from iPhone, along with quite a few points that I've not seen any other reviewer raise. Firstly, the good things, and starting with one that I noticed fairly quickly after I started to move all of my subscriptions over, and that was that things are noticeably cheaper on Android than on iPhone. Now here are two that I've come across in just a few weeks. YouTube Premium, $15.99 per month when signing up on iPhone, but over on Android, $11.99 per month. Odd. But it is not just YouTube. Three credits with Audible, so three books, $23.99 on iPhone, only 18 on Android. Whilst some might say that the Android Play Store is a wild west of third-party applications, Apple's intention to take a cut of every purchase on an iPhone means that developers will just simply increase their price to make up for the difference. Now, depending on which side of the fence you'll sit here, you'll either think that this is the Apple tax you pay for buying an iPhone, or maybe you think it's worth it for the safety and security that Apple gives you with their app restrictions. Now, next up is Customization, and I love being able to customize everything about my Android experience. Now, if you're the kind of person that loves to tinker and customize and change home screens and load icon packs, then yeah, the customizability of Android is second to none. Having gesture shortcuts with Nova Launcher has been so nice. I can have just a few key shortcuts display on the screen, but then if I wanna swipe up or down on certain apps or even certain parts of the screen, it can launch other apps. Now, I can understand why many Apple users don't care for this because they just use the phone as it's been designed. But I do also really enjoy being able to customize my phone to this level. Now this also includes things like this sidebar which is unique to Samsung's One UI. I can be inside any app and just swipe across with my thumb to pull out a list of apps. And not only can I get to them, but if I drag them onto my screen, I can run them side by side which has been genuinely useful a few more times than I thought it would. Like when I realized that my workouts didn't carry over from the strong workout app that I use on iPhone. I was able to have both my workout guide and the strong app side by side, which made it really easy to get everything set back up again. Now, another big thing that people debate about constantly are the cameras. Now, I've come to love the images that devices like the Google Pixel can take. I think that's probably my favorite camera of all so far. Now, I also like the images from the S23 Ultra, but the one thing that for me makes the S23 Ultra win is having a useful 10 times zoom lens because having this 10 times zoom lens means that I can zoom in when you know my kids are running around or playing sports whereas over on the iPhone their recent innovation has been to add a two times zoom when we already have a 0.5 a one and a three times already kind of feels pointless to me now yes it's not as smooth as an iPhone yes there is noticeable shutter lag on many phones I've tested including the s23 ultra in some situations but that 10 times lens can give you such great results now with that said video is an area that I still wish the s23 ultra and Android in general was stronger at it is definitely not as good as the iPhone I just find the video quality can be quite inconsistent on Android and at times it can be quite choppy and the audio I, I just feel is not up to that of the iPhone standards. Which in itself, as an Android user, now I can say that, is really frustrating because they've had years to perfect this. They've also partnered with some of the leading flagship brands that make DSLR and mirrorless cameras. So it is really frustrating to see that they are still behind the competition. And then we have the messaging. Blue bubbles versus green bubbles. Which side are you on? And from my experience of making these videos for the last three years or so, this issue at a very high level just comes down to where you're located. If you're in the US, for example, where iMessage is much more dominant, then it's more of an issue. But outside of the US, and certainly here in the UK, most people have already switched to other messaging services like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, even Telegram, Signal. So there's no real reason to still be using SMS or even iMessage. And since switching to Android, my SMS messages have been exclusively used for authentication codes to log into you know, various websites when I'm buying things. And I know we have the whole RCS messaging thing here on Android as well, but honestly, at least here in the UK, nobody uses SMS anymore. Everyone's already moved to the other platforms. So it is either using iMessage or perhaps a myriad of the other messaging platforms. Now let's switch things up and talk cars now. Now we have a couple of cars in the household, one that supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and one very expensive, very technologically advanced car that does not. But one thing I've come to love about my Tesla and I guess Android in general, is that I can download an app to my Android phone, which tricks the car into thinking it's connected to Android Auto, and then I can just fire up a web browser 
and then access Android Auto in my car that doesn't support Android Auto. Now it's not the best experience, it's pretty slow and a bit clunky, but it does work. And I couldn't do this on an iPhone without buying a separate device that does all of the clever stuff. So now at least I can experience Android Auto on both of my cars, and it's a pretty similar experience to Apple's own CarPlay. So that has been the good, but what about the bad of switching to the S23 Ultra and Android in general so far? Well, one frustration that I keep on having now has been Google or Samsung Pay. Now I don't actually carry around a wallet with me anymore. I haven't done it for years because Apple Pay has replaced everything. I know I can tap my watch or my phone basically anywhere and it works. Samsung Pay and Google Pay, not so much. In fact, here in the UK, Barclays Bank, which is like one of the UK's biggest banks, doesn't even support Google or Samsung Pay. They literally told me that they're just starting to roll it out now, but the reliability. Now I saw this recently on a friend's channel. Oh no, could not complete transaction, try again. And he was having the exact same issue as I've been having. Sometimes Google Pay just doesn't work, or in one situation, Google Pay will tell you that it's not worked, so I go to use a different card to pay again, only to find that the first transaction did go through and now I pay twice. There is no reason I can find for this, even after contacting my bank. Sometimes they'll go through, sometimes they won't. Now I also use my phone to get into the car park at my local gym and into the gym itself, on the S23 Ultra at least. It doesn't let me into the car park and when I try and scan it in at the gym itself, it's super slow. Like sometimes it's a second or two, sometimes five seconds or more, just waving my phone around and trying to get it to trigger. Again, on the iPhone, I literally just tap it and it works instantly. Over to the watch now, and the Android watch experience is not as good as the Apple Watch. I'm sorry, I've really, really tried here. Now I've been switching between both the, the Apple Watch, the Pixel Watch, and the Galaxy Watch, but the whole interface on these Android watches just seems to suffer from issues. It, it lags, it stutters, animations aren't smooth. I just really hope that Samsung can solve this in their Galaxy Watch 6 and Galaxy Watch 6 Pro that they're about to release in the same way that the you know huge performance jump from the S22 to the S23 was. But there's also simple things like when finishing a workout on the Galaxy Watch, you have to swipe exactly horizontally to access the menus either side, otherwise it doesn't work. And when you combine this type of kind of interface with water when you're swimming, it is even more difficult to use it. If you use a ring alarm system or have any ring cameras around the house, you can't snooze notifications directly on the watch. You have to pull out your phone to do that, which is kind of annoying for that to happen whilst on a call or in a meeting and you just want to, you know, quickly snooze for an hour instead of muting everything. Now when I mute my phone, my watch doesn't mute, which means I end up in plenty of weird situations where my watch will go off, but my phone won't and vice versa. And basically I just generally forget, you know, what is set to what, so I end up missing messages from, well, mostly my wife who's never best pleased. Again, I don't understand why you can't sync the mute status from the phone to the watch. It does look like you can or used to be able to do this, but the options just aren't there on the S23 Ultra. But with all the bad stuff I've said about the watch, the battery life is crazy. We are on day two and 54% and I've slept with it last night, used it for a full day yesterday with workouts. It is crazy. Considering this watch can be had for less than an Apple Watch and a third of the price of an Apple Watch Ultra, battery life is just as good. Now I can easily go three days without charging the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and I do that regularly. But there are things that I've missed, like things that now I've switched, I keep thinking about and wondering was I better off? Now most of them are actually really minor things that I haven't really noticed as being a thing before, but now being you know, out of the Apple ecosystem, other than my Mac and my iPad, it's reminded me of how polished Apple's integration really is. Like when opening a PDF on, well, any device, it remembers which page I was last reading. So open a PDF on my Mac, and then open it on my iPhone, and it will open up at the same page that I left it on my Mac. On Android, it just opens up the first page every single time. Now we've also missed the focus states which sync across everything. Like when I walk into the gym, it changes my watch face to one with all of my workout complications. My phone mutes all of my notifications and this syncs across to my iPad and my MacBook too. And when using my Mac, I have a focus state set when I open a specific app. So when I'm recording my videos, then it mutes all of my Apple devices around me. And mostly because of some, I guess, more recent decisions I made around my house, I've also missed being able to use my watch and my phone to control the Apple TV we have in the living room, like adding family photos to the TV wallpaper album we created, and features, of course, such as AirDrop and continuity to seamlessly copy files around between like family and friends. It has definitely made me appreciate the small details in the Apple ecosystem, an ecosystem that used to make me shudder with dread because, you know, I was locked in, but actually, they've done something pretty impressive that nobody else is yet to match. But with all of that said, although I don't think the grass is any greener on either side of the fence, I'm still enjoying the Android experience. It's just 
difference. And after over a decade of using an iPhone, I'm enjoying difference.